Hello there. Welcome. Thanks for joining me again. Um, I'm going to try something uh, today. Just going to have a little fun. Um, I was painting uh, this morning at the McMichael collection, which is uh, a really beautiful collection of the Group of Seven uh, in Kleinberg, Ontario, uh, north of Toronto. And um, it's an inspiring landscape, that's for sure. Uh, the image I'm going to paint now is uh, one of the buildings that's across from the main collection. And um, it's, uh, oh, I think like kind of a school, maybe. I'm not, actually not sure what they use this building for, but it's an older building and an interesting shape. Um, I painted this in a larger scale on the spot today, and uh, maybe I'll show that to you later. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, or maybe I'll post that. But um, this is now um, just a, well, a quick sketch, I suppose, in color uh, to give you an idea as to how to put color down fresh and simply, hopefully, and um, maybe make something work here. I'm actually more interested in the shapes and the colors than I am in the physical features of what I'm painting in front of me. So that's kind of a curious thing. Um, let's see how this goes. Uh, it should be uh, short and sweet. And um, again, thanks for joining. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, pass this on to your friends or someone who you think might be interested in this. Um, the subscribers, uh, the number is going up. I haven't forgotten about the prize because we've gone over the 500 mark. So um, that'll be happening. Lots going on right now um, in my life. So I'm, I'm wanting to do what I can to show up on uh, Fridays. Um, let's see if we can make this work. All right, here we go. Uh, so um, you can see here, um, well, I've got a, a blank board and let me just get me out of the way. There we go. Okay, it's a little shaky. All right. So on the left here, I've just got a little uh, canvas board. I've primed it with uh, an oil uh, gesso, an oil-based gesso. And on the right-hand side here, I've spent some time mixing a bunch of colors up that I think I'm going to use. Um, I don't know if I'll use all of them or not. Let's just see how this goes. Um, basically, uh, as far as the uh, primaries are concerned, I've got a yellow ochre, uh, cadmium yellow medium. I've got a cadmium lemon. I have a viridian. I have an alizarin crimson. And I have a permanent rose, which is something I don't use that often. But anyhow, I just thought I'd throw it in. I've got an ultramarine blue and a manganese blue. And of course, titanium zinc mixture with white. Um, and I've made all of these colors here uh, from those basic colors. So if you're one who's keeping lists and wanting to know the materials, um, that's what that is there. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just start with basically um, some big color shapes, washes. I'm going to start with in the beginning. And um, you can't see what I'm painting here, but um, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> if I make a real mess of it, you won't know if I have. So I'm just going to grab some color here. Uh, I've got a certain order to this. Um, I'm sort of going sky colors here, and then I'm getting into trees and I'm getting into a building over here. So this is just a a quick, you know, mix. When I say quick mix, it took me the better part of an hour and a half to mix these colors. So, you know, I just want to get something down and get some color feel going. And composition wise, well, I have an idea what I want to do. Let's see if we can pull this off. All right, I'm painting around my clamps here, which I'll end up fixing later in the corners. Um, I'm just wanting to make sure I have these things clamped down securely, that's all. So this is part of my sky here. And um, I'm just gonna let this drip down a little bit. Get some good solid color in here. 
and then clean my brush off and get the next color down. If you have the time to premix your, well, actually it makes sense to take the time to premix your colors. I really think it's a good idea because it's one of those things that you don't have to be as worried about when you're painting. So it's kind of nice to have something in place uh, that you can just put down. And you know, uh, this is not supposed to be a paint by number, but at the same time, if you can save painting a whole bunch of stuff or, you know, mixing a whole bunch of stuff while you're on the fly, uh, that helps a lot. Sometimes I'll even pre-mix things before I go out playing or painting, um, anticipating what colors I might see. At least I have a base of some sort. Um, and that's a quick way of getting a nice fresh color, keeping it clean. And hopefully this is all going to make sense when I'm, when I'm done here. I may have to mix more color as I go. You know, that's, that's really possible. It's okay. Um, now you can see, I've just gone straight in over white canvas is what, which is something I don't really prefer to do. It's not something I do that often, but to keep the color fresh, uh, today, I thought I would just do this. I'm going to go back into this blue that I have up here and just solidify that a little more. This is an ultramarine blue and a bit of manganese in there with titanium and zinc mix. And you can see, I'm just trying to get some shapes going here. Um, I'm going to try and keep this kind of on the graphic side. So somewhat abstracted and let's see if this will work out. When you're doing these kind of things, you know, you can just put the paint down intuitively. I don't have a super huge plan in my mind, um, but I have an idea as to what I want to do. Um, so up here, I've got sky. I'm going to have some trees. I'm going to have a building that's going to go in this area right here. And um, maybe I'll just get into painting some of the tree colors. I'll just put them down quickly. In this case, going from uh, a darker color, I'm gonna just grab a little bit of this darker color here and see if I can't get some nice shapes going in here. And then I'll go with the lighter color over top. And you can see I haven't really mixed my color around so that it's flat. Um, uh, when I say flat, it's okay to mix a couple of different colors together and let them blend visually so that you have some freshness to them. Again, going to this darker color. And at this stage, I'm sort of drawing out the shapes that I'm going to be seeing in this building and trying to put some trees in. There's going to be some kind of tree going up this way. And I'm putting the shadow shapes of the trees in at this stage. It's a big brush, really trying to, again, keep this really simple, keep it graphic. And I don't want to spend a ton of time working out all kinds of fiddly little details on this. Um, that's something you can do later if you really want to. You can bring more detail in. But at this stage, it's just blocking things out. That's all it is. Um, I've already run out of that darker paint, so I'm going to grab some on my other palette over here and just bring it in. One advantage of mixing your paints ahead of time is if you have your primaries nearby, which I do on a canvas that's beside me here, or sorry, on a piece of gray paper that's beside me here, I can just go back and mix more as I need it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so a couple more darks in here just to get some punch in this area. I'm going to have some trees that come in here. Hopefully this will all make sense in a short while. And keeping a clean brush, really important to keep a clean brush. In fact, for these next colors, I'm going to use a, a fresh brush, a clean brush here. Uh, so that, uh, you know, I have some real, some clean color going down. Just going to grab 
a little bit of, I need to get a little bit of medium here. My medium is a, a combination of linseed and uh, odorless terps. It's roughly uh, one part linseed and the other two parts odorless thinner. And that gives me kind of a nice mix that I like to work with. You may find there's certain ways that you like to work. You have certain preferences. Experiment. You can see I'm putting that down fairly thick. I can afford to thin that down just a little more for what I want to do here. All right. And this is just a base color that I'm putting down. That's all it is. You can see that, gr that uh, blue that's there mixes into it, creates a little bit of a green. Um, it's okay if you go into other colors around, as long as it's not interfering with the overall values that you're painting. Uh, it's quite okay to do that. Okay, so, all right. Now I wanna get um, some darker colors in on the building. So I'm gonna go back into my dark mix again and they're more towards the ochre side. I didn't actually mix this color ahead of time. So I'm just doing this on my palette on the fly. All right, just gonna put some dark color in here. A little more dark color here. And you can see it's a very wet application. I'm trying to keep my uh, shadow areas a little thinner, keep them a little more transparent. There's nothing wrong with that because generally shadows tend to be more transparent in quality and lights tend to be more opaque so that's something to keep in mind now because this is on an oil primed uh, board it's easy for me to lift color away so you can see i can just take my brush and push that away and this is a nice way to take away color if you don't want it to run down too much, sometimes I'll just paint thick or paint over top of an area like that. Um, or I'll just take some paper towel, which I can do right now, and just keep that area nice and clean so I can put some nice clean color into this zone right here. All right. Okay, going back again into that darker color that I had. I just want to bring up a little bit more detail in this building. Make sure I get my drawing correct if I can. It's one of the things that everyone struggles with no matter what level they're at. Some people seem, seem to have like a natural inclination towards being able to draw things. Um, in the right perspective and the right values. That's really quite a gift if you have that. Um, I find I really have to focus when I'm doing this to make it work. Drawing is one of those things that you, you need to have a little bit of patience with. Okay. Now again, you can't see what I'm painting or you can't see the reference I'm painting but that's okay. I'm just trying to make a painting that works for me. All right. Okay, that's enough of that color for now, I think. Maybe I'll just soften it out here a little more. You can see I'm painting very thin in these areas. Um, you can push back against the color if you want to create more texture. Use your brush the other way, like pushing up this way as opposed to dragging it down. That's another nice way to work. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this lighter color here and just put in a little bit of this roof line that I see in the top. And you can see I've been changed brushes here. I'm working with a pretty big brush for the size of the image that I'm trying to paint. It's okay. All right, now. Um, I want to get a little bit 
I want to get a little more color going in a couple of areas. I'm going to bring a little more of that sort of that pinky color into the top of this building and maybe down in a few spots here. Maybe there are a couple of lights that pop out of this area here. And uh, you'll notice I'm using flat brushes so far. I find they give you good control. All right, there's a little roof, a little dormer area that happens in this zone right about here. And it creates a little bit of a focal area. This sharp little peak creates an arrow, kind of points up. And I think it needs to be a little deeper, like so. And you can see this is starting to take shape, looks like some kind of building. I'm going to go into some darks again here. Your darks can almost be any color, by the way. Um, they don't have to be uh, black. A lot of uh, artists just reach for black, and it's not really the, the solution. You know, um, when you get into shadows, you can afford to have some nice colors happening in the shadows. have a couple of dark accents in this window area here so I can go into that I'm using a lizard crimson and ultramarine blue and just a touch of yellow ochre to get these darks working now there are some shadow shapes that happen across this roof line but before I get into that, I think I want to resolve the foreground area a little more. Um, and I'm looking now at this roof, this area here. I can resolve these light values that are around this peak. If you've got enough paint down, you can just move that paint around. It's one of the great advantages of oil paint. It's not quite the same with acrylic, although if you have the acrylics that last, well, stay wet a little longer, that can work, of course. Um, all right, I'm gonna bring in a foreground here. I'm gonna start with this pinky kind of color, believe it or not, because there's a walkway that has this kind of pink color happens in the foreground. It's a very different painting on something that is all white because you really have to be cognizant of your values. Um, you have to be checking and making sure that your values are making sense. Um, I'm going to put a dark swath of what is a grassy area in here. And you can see that's like an arrow that's pointing towards the middle of the painting. And I'm putting that in fairly thin. I really could afford to go a little thicker and a little darker. So I'm going to do that down in here. And as it gets into this area here, I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit so that it feels a little more welcoming. this green here. This is in shade still, so you can see there are values in the shadow areas and colors in the shadow areas. You don't have to make it all flat. As long as the values are working, and when I'm talking about values, for those of you who know, of course, you know I'm talking about how light or dark something is. 
uh, compared to everything else around it on a scale of say one to 10 or one to eight, depending on what scale you like to work with, getting the right value is really key. Okay. Um, I wanna bring in a fresh brush and get some nice color going in, in this area here now. Um, I'm gonna go into, it's kind of a, a violet color. I'm wondering if this might be a little too light. I don't know, we'll see. might work okay one of the things again about mixing your color ahead of time is you have a chance to really look at the values and try and and make them accurate because when you're painting again if you're painting outdoors which is something I was doing today um, you know the lights changing all the time and so it's a challenge to get your values and your color harmony and all of those things worked out uh, when you're when you're painting outdoors. So, you know, you've got all kinds of things to contend with. People who are watching or bees that are flying around. There are all kinds of distractions. So keeping your focus is really a key thing. If you can do that, uh, I'm going to bring in uh, quite a, a light, bright green now. And this is an area that the sun is catching right in here. And that gives us a sense of foreground. When I say foreground, this is foreground, but our eyes look past that to these brighter, more intense chroma colors. Uh, okay, now some of the greens that I see in the trees, I kind of want to get those going now. I'm just going to pop them in. I could have, I really could have had more paint mixed up ahead of time. You can't have too much paint, it seems, no matter what it is you're painting. It's pretty hard to have too much paint mixed up. And this is a small board. So you can imagine how much paint you can go through if you're painting larger. Letting a little bit of that color underneath come through. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I'm going to bring a little bit more intense color into a couple of trees that are back in here. Maybe a little over here as well. And of course, as I'm mixing these, there are colors underneath that are pulling through. And when I mean, when I say pulling through, every time I put a brush stroke down now, the color underneath finds its way into the color that's going on on top. back to this uh, walkway area here. Some nice uh, violets and darker colors that are coming into it. Let's just see what this looks like. I'm going to put these in. Keeping in mind that there's movement to this. So I want to bring the eye towards the, the middle, towards this area here, which is my area of interest. And just to pick up on that, um, I can pop in a color that is even out of context with the other colors that are going on so far. And that will bring my eye to this area. I've gone on about focal points in the past. One of the things you can do to bring someone's eye to an area is to uh, change a color up. Something that doesn't appear in the painting already or in the image already, 
will bring your eye to an area. This is another kind of a secondary focal area right here. There's a little wall that comes across this way. The light was picking up very nicely on that. And just to carry that kind of color over, I'm gonna take that into the building here. We'll define this a little better after a bit. I want to get some richer darks going. In the tree area, there's no sense yet of kind of a trunk that's happening. So I just want to get a couple of darks up in here. Maybe darks that carry over into this area here. So that you can, so you pull your shapes together, pull your darks and your lights together into shapes that are interesting, if you can. When you paint this way, there's a nice fresh quality to it, hopefully, um, that keeps everything kind of active and alive. So just let your brush do the work. In golf, they'll say, let your club do the work. Well, I'm not so good at letting my club do the work. I feel like I have to hit the ball with all my strength. But the truth is that uh, the golf clubs are designed to lift the ball. So, and depending on the loft, that lifts it higher or lower. So when I'm talking about letting your brush do the work, it's the same idea. Let the brush do what it's designed for, which is, uh, you know, putting paint down, of course, but in, a, in such a way that um, there's some interest and excitement to it. Now there were some nice shadow shapes that were happening across the top of this roof when I was painting. So I'm just gonna let those drop into place. And I need to go with a little darker value into some of these shadow shapes on the roof as well. There is kind of a paint by number feel to this, I have to admit, when I paint this way. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people learned how to paint with paint by numbers. I need to bring a darker, warmer, color in, which is more like an ochre actually, but I need to bring a little bit of white into that ochre so that it's not too, that it, so it cools it down. In this case, we're working with warm light, uh, cooler shadow. So I just want to bring a little bit more of that gray, green, ochre feel into this roof here. Pull these shadows together. You can see the values are fairly close to each other. All right. Um, there's some nice cool greens that also happen in these trees up in here where they're not in direct light and just throw a couple of those in really changing up your greens you know a lot of people struggle with greens well pre-mix a bunch you know warmer cooler get a variety of greens going 
Um, and if you want to neutralize your greens, of course, you bring reds into them. That, that really helps. Now, when I look at this roof here, um, I feel like it's not cohesive. It's not blending together. I'm going to take a palette knife and just drag it gently through here and let's see what happens. This could or maybe it'll work, maybe not. That was interesting. Maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna go back into these colors here. And because I'm working with an oil base underneath this, it's an oil primer, oil base primer, I can take color away when I need to. So that's always handy to know. You need to do it. Get a couple more darks going here. So we really have some accent areas. Just placing the brush down now. I'm not trying to get too fancy with my drawing. I want to go back into my greens and get those working also. So I'm going to pop a little color up into this zone here. Now you can see I'm working with my lighter greens, my lighter green yellows here. And then I'll go back into that with some darker ones when I need to. So I can go back in with some cooler greens into these areas here. And that combination of warm and cool is how we see things uh, chromatically. So it just feels, their color notes, if that makes any sense, it kind of feels right without really knowing what's going on. It gives you a sense of depth there. Now you can see these shadow areas on the roof are really not working very well. I'm going to try and pull them together a little more. Just a little more definition. And maybe just knock that point down. It's getting a little too much attention. And of course we can have some of those colors in here. It's a little bit of light is hitting this roof, not a lot. There were big trees that were casting a shadow across this landscape. And of course, if there's holes where the light gets through, they should be a little brighter, a little lighter. And on this side of the building, the, shadow, the sun was reaching that side, so I'm going with what I see in nature. I don't have to slavishly copy it, but I want to get the impression of what I saw. You can see that's a little grayed out, a little muddy. It's okay. So I've had shadows happening there. I have to make sure um, that I follow through with some of the shadows that were happening happening in the uh, foreground across the ground as well, and match them up with these shadows in here. Looking for patterns, looking for ways of tying all of these things together and still keeping it fresh. That's the challenge always.
When I look at this, that's a little too dark there. Now I think I can afford to lighten it up. I'm gonna grab a green and a blue. I'm gonna go right into my Viridian and just grab some of that. It's an old Holland Viridian, it's quite nice. And I'm just gonna lighten this area through here a little more so it's not so punchy. Again, looking at my values, always trying to be somewhat, well, as accurate as I can with my values without killing myself. And these shapes break up too. I'm go back into that pink again and just put that up against that green. Like I say, there's a path that has that color and maybe it, a little bit of light just pops through in this area here. That pink can work to pull our eye over. Okay, um, I'm gonna make up a green here that's kind of a neutral green using the color of the roof that I had here but adding a little green into it and just get some other types of greens going that are less important but they help contain this area here. Because right now there's a lot of violets and you know big shapes that aren't really telling us what's going on. I want to tell enough of the story to have a story but I don't need to slavishly again I don't need to slavishly follow everything that I'm seeing. Now this point here is a little disconcerting and I drop some more violet in here just to keep that a little cleaner It's really nice to work with lots of paint and again wishing I mixed up just a little more of these colors. A little bit of drawing happening here. I'm not getting the definition in areas that I want to sometimes. And when you're not, you just go back into them and uh, just make it work, that's all. I think this color here, I need to pull over into this area here. Up against that yellowy green is kind of nice, I like that. And maybe even in this area, that can happen a little more there. So these are like color notes, if that makes any sense. You know, these high notes. I'm gonna grab some white and bring in just a little bit of that intense yellow, make it even lighter. And really bring the eye up through here with even lighter highlights. This area still bothers me a little, I must admit. Um, I'm wanting to soften it down. So I'm gonna do that by changing my value here, taking that down a little, and maybe putting a little darker green into this area here to tie things together. We really don't know 
what's happening as far as the shadows of the trees are concerned. So this is something you can do and it will still work. I want to get a little more a sense of the shadows of the trees up against this roof line here. I think I'm going to knock that corner down just a little. And this is really, you know, a very intuitive process at this stage. Um, where do I need to, you know, pop in some lights to make this work? I'm trying to keep my shapes varied as much as possible. Anyone doesn't know Tom Thompson, some of you in Europe who may be watching this, um, you might want to look up Tom Thompson and see how he played with color and uh, changed his values to make them work and created color harmony. Um, when Stefan was visiting here, we came to this place, again, McMichael Collection in Kleinberg. And um, we looked at his work and really, truly, it's quite stunning uh, to see how he simplified things, how he basically brought simple color together um, and kept it harmonious and kept the abstract shapes of working where he wanted them to. Um, I'm looking back at this sky and I want to bring more interesting shape into the sky we don't we don't know what's going on here that's the thing so you know are there clouds here maybe i can start to design things at this stage to try and pull things together got a little bit of that yellow coming up into the cloud it's okay when that happens there's nothing wrong with that it creates a sense of harmony you just don't want it to get muddy that's all um, so maybe we'll get a little more of that blue coming in here, make it more uh, solid, paint it like you believe it. Or so that it can be believed. Maybe that's the way to put it. It's a fairly graphic approach, really. Trying to find some rhythm, trying to find some movement in this. Oh, without bashing my camera, which I'm doing. Sorry about that. My paint, the back of my paintbrush is longer than it is comfortable to be painting in this confined space. take this purple here the, again this is intuitive I'm not sure this violet I'm not sure how well this will work but I'm gonna give it a try just to bring a little more dimension into this area here so that it's not just so flat Covering these areas that are very thin now. Letting the blue peek through. I keep hitting my phone as I'm doing this. My apologies. Just looking for rhythm right now. If you watch my program on rhythm. This is something that I'm trying to be aware of more. It creates more interest, more excitement. If you have some shapes that have movement to them. Now the values are very similar in here to what, the color that I'm using. So I can actually put in a few little shapes that are a little lighter than these values here. 
but I can put a few shapes in that add interest to these areas that are a little bit dull. All right, now I really feel like I want to pull things together and put just a couple of finishing touches on this. I don't want to get too crazy with it. I'm going to go in with um, a little bit of a darker violet color into the side here. Just get some darkness going here. We tend not to look at darks so much. We look at lights. So just going to drop a couple of darks in here. Fill this out a touch. Again, trying to keep it fresh. I'm going to mix my Viridian and Alizarin Crimson together, which are somewhat complementary, and put some really rich darks in this area here. The darks force our eyes towards the light. That's what happens. Looking to try and break up shapes that are too similar to each other. Okay. Now this um, blue that I was using, that light blue, is really a, a manganese blue um, and I have a feeling this color here is pretty close in value it is so I'm gonna pick up this color here and just add a little more interest into these areas here in fact I'm gonna go even lighter and pop a couple of lights into this area here, closer to the focal area, keeping the color fresh, keeping it clean. So there's some variety of color going on in this area. Variety is interest is important. keeps keeps things more interesting because it gives our brain something to try and figure out. I can even bring a little bit of that violet color into the shadow areas, the edges of the shadow areas that are happening on the building, on the roof. The color up here, it finds its way down through the colors below. That's what happens. We're getting a little bit of reflected light into the shadow areas from the sky. I like that it joined right there kind of want to open it up again so I'm gonna just open it up a little here this way so it's not super obvious I'm really putting paint in here now Again, looking to try and create interesting shapes. If it doesn't work the first time, you can go back, you can do it again. Sometimes it looks better when the painting's dried for a while and you go in and 
make more happen with it. So there's this kind of playful rhythm that's coming all the way down now. I'm gonna go in, just throw in a couple of little highlights on the ground because they're there. soften this area just a little through here so the edge is not so sharp watch out for sharp edges they can really detract like just a little edge like that gets too much attention you can just brush that out a little soften it down so that our eye comes to this area in here that's the idea Okay, I sort of feel at this stage like I could use just a couple of crisp edges. I'm going to grab a violet and bring it across this way. And maybe the same on this side here. Sometimes it's just a little crisp edge that you need to pick something up. I'm gonna do the same with the roof line here. Let that break down. And maybe a little on the other side as well. Not all the way, because it goes into shadow. color that's in this little window area right here. And maybe just carry a little more color into the lower windows down in here. They pick up a bit of light. And just a couple more little highlights through here and I think I'm starting to fuss with it now, and I don't want to do that. Um, some areas are not reading the way I like them to. This area right here, it's a little pathway that comes down into the foreground. So I'm gonna bring a very, very light color into this pathway that happens right here. And a highlight or two. Sometimes that's all you need just to get a feeling for what's happening. Soften this down. And I'm almost ready to leave this alone. It's hard letting these things go. We keep, I keep seeing things that I think would be nice without getting too finicky and fussy. Just a couple little highlights. All right, I could keep going on this, but I think I wanna leave it now. I'm gonna come back to you. Uh, hopefully that was interesting. Um, it was fun, I enjoyed painting that. Uh, I didn't go crazy with a lot of detail, of course. Um, but um, that's the idea, you know, block it in, keep it simple. Uh, again, I'm, this is no award-winning painting, but it's a process. Uh, and it shows you what you can do if you premix your colors, you have some sense of a design. I definitely could make this more interesting if I spend a little more time on it. And I will try to do that and then post that so, um, again, thank you uh, for showing up. That was uh, just under the hour, and I kind of like to keep them 
you know, not too long so you don't all fall asleep. Um, again, thanks for showing uh, a thumbs up if you like it, if you want to pass it on to your friends um, or someone you think might be interested, I'd appreciate. And um, uh, keep painting. Um, hopefully uh, our world starts to turn the corner with all the things going on right now between climate issues and um, between uh, that and COVID and oh, so of course there's a lot happening but uh, painting is a meditation it gets you away from all of that stuff and uh, gets you doing something productive and I always feel better when I paint I don't always feel good about the painting I've done but I always enjoy the process of at least trying so um, give it a go if you haven't painted before uh, pick up a brush, give it a try, at least, you know, a pencil even, and just draw and see what that feels like. It's a lot of fun, uh, and it's something you can do anywhere, anytime, no matter where you are, right? You can take a sketchbook with you and, and travel the world and paint, or and draw, rather, and eventually get into painting if you want to. So, th again, thanks. Um, stay safe, stay well, and we will see you next time. Have a good day. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.